get in losers, we're going shopping. I made a face oh. mallet, but justice for Mrs. George! I didn't see you there. So after my recent style videos, are we calling them style videos? Fashion is dead, so that term is out. Clothes sounds a little bit generic. Fabric that we put on our bodies for fun isn't very SEO friendly. So we'll go with style. A lot of you are asking me for tips on how to branch out more with your own style. Own style. I'm a really strong believer in the idea that you don't have to buy something fast fashion or trendy or even buy anything really that new to refresh your wardrobe and change up your look a little bit. As I talked about a little bit in my how to build a wardrobe you'll actually wear video, I like to take inspiration from things that I just really love and especially when they're a bit old and naff. And here in the year of our Lord 2021, you don't get anything that much more naff than Mean Girls. Now I'm a massive Mean Girls fan, let's just be, let's just clear that up for any naysayers, but nobody in that lineup looks like the kind of style that I would wear. So I'm going to be spending the whole week using these characters outfits to challenge my own sense of style and push my own boundaries. Doing exercises like this really helps me shop my own wardrobe, look for more unusual secondhand items and rediscover kind of unexpected pairings between things I wouldn't have initially put together. Trawling through secondhand websites and in the past and hopefully in the near future real life charity shops is one of the biggest joys in my life and I find if you're looking for something specifically inspired by an outfit but isn't necessarily on trend or fashionable they're usually so much easier to find way cheaper and instead of like a lot of consumers fighting over a few secondhand items that are specifically coveted by everybody at the same time it makes more sense to be inspired by weird things and look for the more obscure pre-loved bits of clothing because there's less competition it's cheaper it's genius so I'm going to be spending this whole week dressing as Mean Girls characters. I kind of mainly shopped my own wardrobe, but did pull out a few pieces from Depop to experiment with and not stuff that I would have usually bought. So we'll see how I get on and what I actually keep and what I give away to friends or resell on. And I'm also going to be giving you some thoughts on my reflections watching the film back like 20 years later. It's 20 years old now, guys. Also, I was thinking about this notion of a problem shared as a problem halved. What if a fun project shared is fun doubled? No? Maths? So I brought in my friend Hannah to join in on the project with me. Tit for tat, I joined in on her outfit project, so you can find out more about that in this video up here. So every day she's going to be recreating the characters along with me so you can see how somebody else with different tastes and a different wardrobe recreates the Mean Girls characters too. So without further ado and hullabaloo, get in losers, we're going shopping. So it's Sunday night before the experiment and I think that it is high time for a Mean Girls rewatch, don't you? But this time I'm going to have a notebook. So today is the first day of the challenge. Rewatching Mean Girls was really fun. It obviously has dated a little bit. I have a lot of thoughts I'm going to share with you over the week. But first, the outfits. Today, we've obviously got to do Regina first. Queens before teens. I'm going to be recreating this outfit. I have a leather skirt. Despite my infamous and long-standing vendetta with white t-shirts, I do actually have a polka dot t-shirt. And, well... I have my own version of a pink cardigan, you'll see. This is gonna be true to Regina in some aspects, but it's also a very me, cozy outfit. Regina without the patriarchy plus some self-care. <laughs> okay, so I have regina I put on a shit ton of bronzer, more bronzer than is my taste, glossy lipstick, which I'm also not known to do, a much more flamboyant glittery eye look than I suppose Regina would accept, but she's not here to stop me. This is my white t-shirt. It's actually really kindly sent to me, gifted, but it's a really amazing Depop shop called Enough Already. They take like old fast fashion clothes, I think this is a Primark top, and embroider like beautiful literary quotes on them. So I've got like a Mary Shelley quote on it. And it's definitely a very me version of Regina. Obviously got 
the famous fluffy cardigan, which would perhaps be Regina when she ages and becomes a art teacher. And then this amazing necklace from Catch Reese that I'm gonna talk about later, but it's a much more me version of the R that Regina wears around her neck throughout the whole film. Then on my bottom, I've got my leather mini skirt, and I was thinking about wearing bright pink tights because that is an option that I have in my wardrobe, of course. But then I could kind of see Regina in my mind's eye side eyeing me and being like tacky. So I went for something sheer and polka dot instead that kind of matches the t-shirt. We have black mini skirt. We have tights because it's cold here. And then this is first aid kit merch t-shirt. But it's just like so perfect for Regina because it's that snipping of the top and the bra showing through, honestly. Also I put lip gloss on because I feel like that's very mean girls. We're gonna be like wearing makeup this week, I think. <laughs> Does anybody remember watching Mean Girls in the cinema? And at that moment where she gets hit by the bus, you genuinely thought she died. Not everybody has experienced three seconds like that, but if you have, let me know so I don't feel old. It was actually really funny watching the film back because I realized that if I had been influenced fashion-wise by this film, it probably was by Regina's style. More for this slash neck black top, which I definitely had one of, and I'm definitely sure that's why. And then also the trend of like putting diamante things in your tear ducts. I did that for years after watching that film, and it was only re-watching it that I was like, oh yeah, that's where I got that from. So Regina, you were influential, and I don't give you enough credit. Okay, so this morning is Karen, and I'm actually really proud of this outfit. <laughs> Karen is definitely the most playful and childish character, so me and my wardrobe identify with her the most. Let's go. Okay, let me talk you through the Karen outfit. So I was watching this video essay about the costume design of Mean Girls, and it talks about how innocent Karen's costume design is. So for Pink Wednesday, she takes it really literally and wears all pink. She has like a more childlike style to everything she wears and she is the only mean girl not to change their style at the end of the film. She's obviously always liked the way she dresses. I decided to use this image for inspiration. I like the kind of hard black with the heart. I found this smock dress on Depop and I like to think that it encapsulates Karen's childlike side and also perhaps liberates her from the kind of very uncomfortable looking mean girls look. <laughs> An incredibly comfy silhouette, but also easy access if she needs to check the weather. I'm a mouse. Duh. I think these are actually cat ears, but it feels very Karen to still be a mouse with cat ears. I even did earrings, because she wears long earrings in this scene. It feels so ridiculous just to be like working at home today dressed like this. No prizes for guessing what colour we're gonna wear today. We're gonna be Katie. It's Katie, it's Katie. But we're gonna do Katie in Damien's shirt. I found the most incredible vintage shirt on Depop and I'm braced for the ponytail. Let's do this. So here we are in the Katie outfit. I've got some pretty natural makeup on. I had to put my hair in a low ponytail. Wearing some just kind of like old, ill-fitting jeans because I feel like that's what she'd do. Unfortunately, not only do I not have her bracelet, I don't have any bracelets. I don't fuck with bracelets. My hands are busy. <laughs> Sorry. Stop being a 14-year-old boy. But this is just like an easy breezy massive pink shirt. I might style it up by rolling up the cuffs. Would that be sacrilege? I might just stay in character and ask Craig where all of the rooms are in our house for the whole day. Just pretend to be a new girl. It will drive him, drive him mad. <laughs> and obviously I'm gonna have to eat lunch on the loo. Fine, fine, bring it on. This is my Katie's first day of school outfit and also very happy that I don't have to wear makeup for this. Even though she's definitely wearing makeup because it's a movie, but in my head, the character isn't wearing any. Okay, we can't let Katie Day pass without talking a little bit about how the jokes 
in Mean Girls have aged. So there are some jokes at the expense of people who are being ignorant. Them assuming that the transfer student from Africa was the woman in the room who was black. That's an assumption that's made fun of and there's lots of stuff like that in the film. But I also have a very big question around Katie. So other people keep calling her like Africa, referring to that girl from Africa, but she literally never corrects them. She never tells them exactly what country she is from on the continent of Africa. And if you have grown up your whole life in Africa, wouldn't it be something you'd wanna mention? <laughs> just once, at least just once. I also saw the scene where she has a house party in her parents' house and she hides the vase under the sink. And then her mum is very offended because she's like, don't you know the cultural significance of that vase to this specific tribe? And Kaylee's like, no. I don't really care. It's confusing whether you're supposed to see, and maybe it's left ambiguous, we are supposed to see it from Katie's perspective and be like, my parents are like so weird because they like respect other cultures. Or you can see it from the perspective that this is Katie's worst moment. Katie at her most evil and ignorant. And it's her that's at fault from forgetting to be respectful to other people like her mum is kind of being, I guess. Okay, so I was Googling a picture of this vase to put in this video, right? And there's this article on beautifulhouse.com talking about how chic this vase is and how you should get one for your own home. <laughs> um, are we okay? Are we okay? I don't think we're okay. Today is the day we've all been waiting for, Janice Ian. <laughs> This is the outfit that I could quite easily assemble just from the clothes that I owned, but I did get a net top from Depop for like a fiver that I think is gonna be perfect. But apart from that, it's all me, baby. Janice is probably the character I identify with most, so this should be pretty simple. I'm most excited about the eye makeup. I think I'm gonna really make a statement. What do we think? <laughs> I thought the chewing gum was appropriate. Incredibly smudged Noel eyes, oversized khaki jacket, net top. She wore like a lot of knee length skirts. I feel that shaving your legs wasn't very janice -eared, and that's okay because it's not very lean and orbs either. <laughs> And then I saw her wear stripy socks in my rewatch of the film as well, so I digged some of those out. The hair is iconic and actually quite practical now that I'm wearing it. I might wear this more often. We all thought it was a style choice, but Janice knew what she was on about. I've always thought of Janice Ian as this kind of subversion of a mistaken feminist <laughs> agenda. She's there taking down what she perceives to be a mean girl, but she is also a mean girl. And she's literally the epitome of not like other girls. I will be honest and say I don't think I got that on my first watch when I was like a teenager. I kind of just looked up to her but I did also think it was really interesting that she seems to be named after Janice Ian as in I learned the truth at 17 that love was made for beauty queen. A song about not being the high school beauty queen and being rejected at high school. <laughs> Just a theory, but the coincidence is too perfect, surely. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to moping around the house, I guess, and not doing my homework, mom. We made a face smell like a foot. <laughs> this is my Janice Ian outfit. I'm pretty pleased with this. I feel like I'm a glam Janice. Like, I don't actually think this is anything that Janice would wear. Well, she might wear these trousers, but I'm not as convinced with the sparkly top. But this is kind of like what I imagine maybe like a glam Janice in her 30s would wear. <laughs> I'm really feeling myself today, as you can tell. If I could, I would have spent this whole day hanging out of a sunroof. That would have been the most Janice move of all. I also really wish that I had the means to paint my trousers like this, but maybe that's a craft project for another day. Rewatching the film, I really like Janice's attitude towards forgiveness, where she just, it's so simple. She just says, are you still an asshole? No, then I guess we're all right. And I think we can all afford to take a leaf out of Janice's book with that one. So it's Gretchen day, which means, did I TikTok right? <laughs> so this is my Gretchen outfit. I'm basing it on this. I've got the red t-shirt with the slogan. I've got the tartan skirt, but the pièce de résistance. Today I'm giving Gretchen justice and she's getting hoops. It's 2021, Gretchen, and hoops can be your thing. Now I didn't own any hoop earrings, uh, but I've been looking for ways on my channel to uplift <laughs> 
small businesses that I think are doing an absolutely bloody fab job. And Catch Reese is this incredible ethical jewellery company who do all of these cool things. And I really believe that ethical, sustainable small business is the future emphasis on small. I'm always getting approached by brands who are already huge to promote things that are already big. But most of the time, to be honest, if I'm ever going to mention anything to do with you suggesting you buy something, I want it to either be around learning or I want it to be from businesses who realise that there's a climate crisis going on out there. Shouldn't be a high bar, but it is. So this isn't sponsored by them at all. They did send me the earrings and also the necklace that you saw in the Regina outfit. I love them both. They come in these beautiful tins that I will probably be reusing for the rest of my life. I've got really like prissy <laughs> kind of Tory earlobes that just like won't do with anything but the best. So I can't actually wear a lot of my lovely earrings that you see in a lot of videos for very long because I get gunky. <laughs> residue and it really hurts um, to keep them in for like more than six hours. These are actually built for you to keep on all the time so I've been sleeping in these, testing them out and they've been bloody wonderful. So yeah this has been my non-spawn but if you're buying jewellery in future consider them because I think they're bloody great. This skirt doesn't actually close at the back because <laughs> of lockdown muffins but I don't actually care. I'm just folding it down. This is a great hack. Watch. Regina says sweatpants are all that fits her right now but I Beg to differ. I do not want to think about how long it took me to do this hair this morning. Normally I don't wear this cardigan tied like this, but I didn't feel like it was very Gretchen having it like hanging down. I think this outfit's pretty fetch. <laughs> We need to talk about Gretchen. There's this funny disdain from most characters throughout the whole film for Gretchen. Not only because she's pretty and also shallow, but because she comes from dun dun dun, new money. Her dad invented toaster strudel. But the depiction of Gretchen in this film really reminds me of the kind of sideline Jane Austen or Bridgerton characters that are presented as tacky, over the top, all because they're trying to fit in with their new status as elite and not quite getting it right because they're not from old money. In fact, I think this outfit embodies that perfectly because we've got the tartan kind of preppy private school kind of skirt and then the kind of tacky cheaper slogan t-shirt and it all makes me kind of reflective about where Gretchen's anxiety about fitting in and having to latch on to a group comes from and it makes me kind of feel sorry for her. Okay, the day has come. The character that is perhaps furthest from my character, Regina's mum. I'm already committing sacrilege on Regina's mum's part because I'm wearing a sports bra. But seeing as Hannah did such a good job of representing Regina's mum's boobs, I feel like we can focus on a different aspect of her style. This tracksuit, iconic. Could I find it on Depop? No. But I realised also that the essence of what made this iconic was the pink velvet. There is something completely audacious about pink and velvet together. So I got this. You'll see. Okay. The earrings have nothing to do with it, but um, I love them too much to take them off. I slept in them, I showered in them, I'm feeling great. I made a concession for Regina's mum, and for the first time in perhaps months, I blow dried my hair. Not that you can tell, but the spirit of her is there. And then, this top. I found it on Depop for about seven quid. Look at it. I've got my sports bra underneath, and because the tracksuit is athleisure wear, I'm wearing some athleisure wear below as well. I'm wearing some purple leggings which i just intuitively think she would approve of and some gold shimmery lip glossy thing now the reason that we're going with a baggy athleisure wear look for regina is because this just arrived <laughs> let's go Regina's mum, this is George. I'm not a cool mum, I'm a regular mum. Lena, your video is probably gonna be demonetized now. And as an apology, I thought I would do a plug for Lena's Patreon, The Gumption Club. For as little as one dollar per thing, you can support this channel and you can join a bunch of lovely people over in The Gumption Club. But I think this is like a great little sexy <laughs> Regina George's mum cosplay. We're not doing a Damien, but if we were, how perfect would this be? <laughs> she doesn't even go here. She doesn't even go here. Regina's mum, Mrs. George, 
gets a bad rep and mainly for good reason but what i would say is that top marks for safe sex parenting and sex positivity regina clearly doesn't have a complex about her sexual health or expression good for you also watch me from back i realized that we see the velvet tracksuit again on regina it looks like because of the cow team bars she is borrowing her mum's clothes and i have a lot of fanfic based questions around this topic like was mrs george supportive of her weight gain did she just try and take regina out for a drink i don't know if i want to tarnish her with the brush of being like a bad mom just because she has breast implants and she lets her little kids watch mtv you know i I, I think the Naughties wrote off Mrs. George as a careless mother without really inspecting what that meant. Like, she was the person there. During Jingle Bell Rock, she's the one who wanted to record it. She looked the proudest of all the parents. Justice for Mrs. George! Yo, it's Tina Fey Day. I'm not even sad it's the last day because I got the best character. Now, I had to tackle something pretty big with this costume. Are we calling them costumes? <laughs> because I have a fear of waistcoats. I just think they look horrific on me and I've never been able to make them work as a fashion choice, which is why they were perfect for this experiment. Because I'm supposed to be pushing myself into dangerous fashion territory for me. And for me, waistcoats are dangerous fashion territory. Now, I spent longer than I'd like to admit looking on Depop for the perfect waistcoat and they all looked bloody fugly. <laughs> but then I managed to combine two magic keywords, patchwork and waistcoat. Now that did turn up a plethora of amazing pieces of art like this, but it also turned this up, pow. And um, I think I love it. I've been resisting properly putting it on for this but the plan is to recreate Tina Fey's costume from the mall and I'm gonna put loads of badges and as many ribbons I can find as possible and it's gonna be epic, okay, you ready? Okay, good. So here is my Miss Norbury. The joy of this costume was that I got to keep my glasses on. <laughs> I have my crimped hair, the waistcoat, which I actually decided was kind of better without the ribbons and the kind of overhaul of it because the idea of the challenge is to make it wearable and to try and persuade myself into liking things <laughs> that I don't usually like. I thought that this was kind of enough once I'd got these buttons on. Because the waistcoat isn't green like hers, I added green to the outfit with these jeans. And I'm also kind of not against this. Would she wear? No, she wouldn't. Not Miss Norbury would. I would. Miss Norbury wouldn't. Do I feel like a scout leader? Yes. But I also feel like, you know, the scout leader that everybody likes. So far I'm not feeling uncomfortable in this waistcoat. It's kind of making me feel quite chill. And I also like that the netting detail in the kind of patchwork of the waistcoat meant that I didn't have to make holes in the waistcoat to put the buttons on. A teacher out of school is like seeing a dog walk on its hind legs. This is my Miss Norbury. It's very loose. I basically just went with black trousers and a shirt. <laughs> We're ending on a high. This is what we've got going. I did think I could go with a waistcoat, but the only waistcoat in this flat is Dan's wedding waistcoat. Here we go. And of course, the slippers. Makes every look. Can we talk about the much sidelined commentary that Miss Norbury has three jobs? Look me in the eyes and tell me that the writers weren't trying to make some kind of point about the underfunding of education in the US. I also think it's nice to end the week on Miss Norbury because she teaches the girls a very valuable lesson. Calling somebody stupid doesn't make you any cleverer. Calling somebody fat doesn't make you any thinner. And I wonder if we translated those kind of lessons into the online social media culture of today. Calling some somebody ignorant doesn't make you any more woke. Calling somebody problematic doesn't make you any more pure. I have to wonder what a 2021 Miss Norbury would say and I wonder if it would be something along those lines. But ultimately she follows the same kind of thought tract as Janice ends up doing and doesn't judge Katie based on her past behaviour but on her present newly developed set of values. So what did you think? How did we do? Let me know in the comments which was your favourite outfit. Personally, I think the whole project was very fruitful. It definitely got me rediscovering things that were in my wardrobe that I hadn't touched in a while. And it also made me branch out with some secondhand items I would never have touched before. For instance, me and this waistcoat, we're pals now, we're good friends. <laughs> she is staying and that would never have happened without this kind of project. I also think it was kind of fitting because Mean Girls is a film 
all about trying to fit in and losing yourself in the process and then coming out the other side more you than you were in the first place. Thank you so much for watching this video. There are more clothes videos over here. There's some planet videos over here. Subscribe if you want to find yourself here again and until next time, frogs not out.